Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Obiyama. I talk about all things Jesus. And so if you're here, you're in the right place, you're in the right company. I recently started a series where I talk you through the spirits of Python, Jezebel, and Delilah, how they manifest, their objectives, strategies that they utilize, as well as how you can counter their strategies with the Spirit of God. Okay? And so we don't talk about the devil to glorify him. We don't talk about the devil to shine light on his name. We do it because scripture says, do not be unaware of the devices of the enemy because it's in our ignorance that we perish. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so yes, there's knowledge that puffs up, but it's also by knowledge that the just are delivered. And so it's what we do with the information that we have, right? If we're mounting strategies against hell with the information we have, then we will remain free set apart and delivered but if we're just sitting on information then you know we, what, what, what good is it for us and so today it's all about Jezebel and no just I'm, I'm looking this way because my iPad is this way Jezebel is not you know the girl that you don't like that whose skirt would be a little short and you feel like it's trying to seduce your man that's, that's not who Jezebel is um, Jezebel is a spirit and it can be in men and women and I've heard it said that Jezebel is a manifestation of an extreme narcissist, so an extreme self-centered individual. That's from the clinical side of things. But I always want to focus on scripture, especially when we talk about demons or even demonology, because there's so much extra biblical text that can lead you astray if you are not being guided by the Holy Spirit as you are reading and, and um, devouring these things. And so when I talk to you about Jezebel, we find, you know, the story of Jezebel in 1 Kings um, 19 and 21. And Jezebel background is the wife of King Ahab. And Ahab was considered a king that did what was more detestable in the sight of Yahweh than any other king prior to him. And his wife, Jezebel, was a Phoenician princess. She was the daughter of Ethbal. Ethbal was the king of Tyre. Tyre was known for its worship of two gods, lowercase, um, Baal and Asheroth. Baal was the god of like, you know, for t uh, farming and agriculture. He was called the owner god. And then uh, Asheroth was the goddess of like fertility and um, sensuality. And so women would worship Asheroth by sacrificing their hair, which was known as their glory, um, or their chastity, which was their purity. And so Baal was also the god of perversion. And so their worship was really consummated through orgies and um, demonic sexual acts. And that's how you ritualized yourself into the worship of Baal and Asheroth. And so that's often why we think about Jezebel and we think about, you know, the little thotty. And we're like, oh, she's a Jezebel. Sensuality and sexuality is an aspect of Jezebel, but it's not the full scope of what the spirit is about and what it intends to do when it's in our churches or what's in our homes or it's in our families, right? So let's talk through what the objective of a Jezebelic spirit is. Number one, it wants to implement another system of worship outside of the one true God, and, all, and that system is to worship Baal, the false God. We see Jezebel do this in the Old Testament, and Jezebel does this in the New Testament. Baal is the, is the God of perversion. He's the God of idolatry. He's the, he's the false equivalence to Yahweh. If you read the Phoenician story of Baal and, and Asheroth, it's really trying to mimic what um, the King of Kings, Yahweh, is and who he is. Baal is considered the owner God, and, and him getting together with Asheroth, his counterpart. We see all the other little gods are born, and you know, life is given to humanity and all this false religion and false knowledge is manifested not true so jezebel comes in and her desire and what she does when she becomes ahab's wife is place herself or place Baal as a primary deity of worship she brought her spiritual background of ashroth and Baal and tried to impose it on god's chosen people and so Jezebel's primary objective, wherever it is, wherever that spirit manifested, manifests in male or female, is to take the people of God's eyes off of the one true God and get them worshiping another false God. And that false God is a God of perversion, typically Baal. And Baal masquerades himself as um, all forms of idolatry. But that idolatry typically is self-centered, self-worshipping. It looks like, you know... Um, the bible or the truth with a little bit of lies so anytime you see a, a perversion which means a um a dysfunctioning of or a dysfunction of the truth there's probably a jezebelic spirit at work okay it wants to kill the true prophets of god that's the second objective of a jezebelic spirit 
if you are a prophet, if you're a prophetic person, you probably attract Jezebel, right? <laughs> um, Jezebel hates God's true prophets. Why? Because the, her first and primary objective or his first and primary objective is to institute false worship. Well, what prevents false worship other than pure authentic worship? What prevents the fake from becoming the standard other than the real existing, right? So if Jezebel can get rid of the true prophets of God, then it can rightfully claim Baal as the real and true God. And so that's why Jezebel hates the prophets. We see it with her and her fights against the prophet Elijah when you know her prophets, the prophets of Baal came against Elijah. And the question was, who was the one true God over Israel? And in that demonstration, we see Yahweh come down and consume the sacrifice of Elijah that was doused in water while the prophets of Baal ran around, cut themselves and saw nothing um, happen to their sacrifice. And Jezebel got so angry about that, that she threatened that she would have Elijah's head by the next morning. So second objective of Jezebel is to kill the true prophets of God. Third objective of Jezebel is to in introduce perversion to the um, hidden members in the form of mutilated men. What I mean by that is oftentimes you will see a lot of um, dysfunction when it comes to the roles of men when there is a Jezebelic spirit at work. What do I mean by that? And what do I mean by roles? I'm not talking about roles as we see them. Men are this and women are that. I'm talking about the headship um, when it comes to to men. Anytime there's a Jezebelic spirit at work, you'll also you'll see dysfunction in marriages. Um, you'll see, you know, a super over, an overly dominant wife. And it's not that a woman can't be powerful or, an, or authoritative, but within the context of the home, your husband is your leader if you are a married woman. And so oftentimes you'll see a wife that superimposes the will of her husband. Um, when there's a Jezebelic spirit at work. Doesn't mean she has a Jezebelic spirit. It means that is a manifestation of that spirit at work in an atmosphere. Um, we also see uh, a champion of vanity. So the, the fourth objective of the Jezebelic spirit is to champion vanity. What I mean by that is that vanity looks like, you know, we are just focused on looks. We're not focused on the spirituality of a thing. We're not, we're not looking at the inward, which is what God judges on, right? Um, the prophet Samuel was told by God, man judges on the outward appearance, but I judge by the heart. Jezebel don't care about your heart. She care about what you look like. That's why when she was going to get killed by Jehu, she sat up there and did her makeup because Jezebel wants to make sure the appearance of a thing is all right. And so you'll often see when Jezebel is functioning in a, in a church or in a home or in a community, right? Um, we're not addressing any of the real issues. As long as everything looks good on the outside, everyone seems to be happy. As long as, you know, we can get away with um, the appearance of a thing, like we don't care if there's authentic lives being changed in the church. We don't care if, you know, people are really encountering Jesus. As long as the appearance of an encounter with Jesus looks is, is in place, then we don't care. We don't care how the church grows, as long as the church is growing, right? We don't care if people are really drawn in by the spirit of grace or because of our fancy marketing tactics. There's typically a Jezebelic spirit at work there. So Jezebel is all about vanity. It cares about the appearance of a thing, not the reality of it. Um, and then the last objective I have written here is that Jezebel, <laughs> last objective is to kill whatever opposes it as a spirit. And we see this in the story of Naboth and his vineyard. So Ahab, the husband of Jezebel, the king, could not have Naboth's vineyard. He offered Naboth money. Naboth's like, no, I'm good, love, enjoy. Ahab pouted. His wife Jezebel found out and was like, why are you pouting? And she was like, you're the king. You shouldn't pout. She writes a letter, signed Ahab's name. In the letter, she falsely accuses Naboth of, you know, treason and gets people um, to stone him so that she can seize his vineyard for quote unquote Ahab. And so anytime a Jezebel like spirit feels like you're in competition with it, its goal is to kill you. If it can't kill you physically, it will kill you spiritually. It will squeeze the life out of you and it won't even squeeze it. It will, it will throw rocks and hide its hand. So if you're in an environment and you're like, why is why, why do I feel like I'm dying? Why, why is my ministry dying? Why is my spirit dying? Why is it that I don't desire to pray? I don't desire to fast. I don't desire to get closer to God. Or why is it that I feel like I have to dim my light every time I'm around so-and-so or them and them? It's probably a Jezebelic spirit at work. Its goal is to kill you. If it views you as competition, watch out. That spirit is going to come after you and it's going to do its best to annihilate you. 
and so what's the strategy of Jezebel, right? We know it's objective, but what's, what is what is its strategy as a spirit? Well, it's going to never show you its face. Jezebel does not like to be exposed. Jezebel does not like to show its face, right? Because it does not want to be the reason like that you feel some type of way. And what do I mean by that? Anytime that Jezebel works in scripture, we see that she hides behind someone else. What do I mean by that? When Jezebel took Naboth's vineyard by way of murder, she didn't sign her name on that document even though she was very much queen. She signed her husband's name. When Jehu came to kill her, she hid behind her eunuchs or she attempted to, right? When she wanted to challenge Elijah, she hid behind her false prophets. So there's never a time where a Jezebelic spirit is directly confrontational. That's not how that spirit operates. That's not its opposite um that's that's not how it you know manifests itself it's gonna hide behind an ahab it's gonna use minions to do its bidding it typically in a in a real life setting looks like gossip so it's never gonna say you know i feel this way it's always gonna be well so-and-so said that about you and i just didn't understand why they said it or or you know if it's it, or they'll tell someone to sell something to you or they'll talk to someone that know they're going to talk to you because the goal of that spirit is not to be found out it wants to maintain a facade because again image is important to jezebel right it's going to maintain its facade while it tries to kill you and it doesn't want to look like a murderer in the process so the strategy of jezebel is always going to be to use other people to do its dirty work um that's primarily it. So it's it's all it's kind of hard to trace a Jezebel because you're going to spend a lot of time chasing, you know, the straw man. You're going to be, you know, attacking the prophets of Baal. You're going to be, you know, looking at the eunuchs crazy. You're going to be looking at King Ahab crazy. But all the time, Jezebel has been puppeteering and pulling the strings. And so it does it as a point of confusion. So it's never found out. Um, and revelations talk about how, you know, the church is going to be uh, uh, condemned because not condemned, but, um, you know, criticized by God because it suffered that woman, Jezebel, it tolerated her to live. And oftentimes our churches do that because we spend so much time fighting the wrong enemy. We call in, you know, Sister Eugene Jezebel because she's confronting the issue. Um, Brother Robert Jezebel because he's confronting the issue. But oftentimes it's probably, you know, Deaconess Amanda in the left corner. That's really the Jezebel, working with the Jezebelic spirit, pulling everybody's strings and hiding their hand behind them. Okay. So how do you defeat a Jezebelic spirit? That's the last part of this video, Jehu. You need the anointing and the spirit of Jehu to defeat a Jezebelic spirit. You need to be unafraid and directly confront it. Jezebel either has to be cast out or killed. There's no two options, there's no two ways about it. What do I mean by that? When Jehu pulls up to where Jezebel is, she says, who is on my side, right? Essentially, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on my side? She di he directly confronts the eunuchs that have been working for Jezebel. And he's looking at this woman and all her finery and makeup. And he does not care. He's like, what's good? Who is on the Lord's side? Or who's on my side? And when he says that, guess what the eunuch does? Grabs that woman and throws her off. Because direct confrontation is required to either kill the Jezebelic spirit or cast it out. This is not one of those spirits you can ignore and it goes away. Jezebel is all about power. It's all about um, dominion. It's all about rulership. All that spirit cares about is being in control. All that spirit cares about is manifesting a false worship to a, um, uh, an idol that is not the one true God. And so it's not just going to, you know, be quiet and go away on its own. You got to confront that spirit. So if you are a non-confrontational person, if you don't have the spiritual acumen or the grace behind you to directly speak and say, get that behind me, Satan, or Jezebel, be gone, you're going to suffer Jezebel to live in your church, in your home, in your community. So I pray that was helpful. Uh, comment, like, share this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.